Steve, the Cosmonaut. Welcome to my office. So I just moved into a new office space where I can record without having little children run in and try and interrupt me with love. But I've got everything set up and I want to show it to you. First off, obviously, we have we have a TARDIS. Uh, I built myself a TARDIS functionally over the holidays because I am also going into audio recording. So if any of you need audiobooks or anything recorded, I would love to do that. But welcome to this, the TARDIS. It opens up very nicely here. This is my recording space. It's very nice and sound deadened in here. I did a good job. I built all of this. Of course, Hoyd mouse pad. We've got various art around. There's a VIN. This was a Secret Sazed present. Thank you! Signed thing of the cover of Kaladin. Some lovely Dalinar art. Art from Katie Payne. I ran a half marathon holding that. And this is where I can record audio in a very well-treated, hand-built TARDIS. It's pretty great. We got my desk. Welcome to my desk. This is where I will be recording all the things. It's basically the same setup as what I had in, I was previously recording in my bedroom. Now I don't have to do that because I got this place. Thank you, patrons. Art on the walls from various incredible artists. Most of these, like that and that and that and that and that and that and that, and that were all painted by my friend Nikki Parrish, who is an incredible artist. She mostly does insects, but for me, she does Cosmere art, which is very kind of her. Also, this is from Dragon Wood Shop, the same person that designed these. Carly is so good. Miranda Meeks, one of my favorite pictures of Vin. Also, I have a signed print of Yezrian from Howard Lyon, which is lovely. Uh, fun things on my desk. This white spine was, again, made by Nikki Parrish. We've got Mbot, a Coloss, a golden microphone because I'm doing audio stuff. And, yes, that is my license plate. <laughs> I'm amazed it wasn't taken, but now it is because it's mine. Also, I made that little sculpture. I, I made this in, like, third grade. It's me reading... Animorphs and the Chronicles of Narnia. That's what really got me into reading, was those books. Over to the left of the filming area, we have another larger bookshelf. There are all of the Year of Sanderson boxes. Most of the things in those boxes are still in the boxes because uh, perfectionism. But we have the Crashing Storms statue flanked on both sides by the painted miniatures and the chasm fiend because it's huge. These little blocks, again, Nikki Parrish, she's incredibly talented. And then we have the books. First, all of the Mistborn coins from Shire Post Mint. Era 1, all of those, Era 2 coins. I backed the initial Kickstarter and then got all the rest of them that they released at Dragonsteel like two years ago. They're amazing. They're so pretty. And all of my fancy books right here. The hardcover fancy of the White Sand Omnibus. The only leather bounds I have. Mistborn, Warbreaker, The Way of Kings, because I backed the Kickstarter, and Way of Kings Prime. And then Mistborn Era, two leather bounds. Uh, two copies of Tress, because my mother-in-law is currently borrowing my copy of Yumi, and so it's not here. So I have another Tress that's sort of just like holding its spot. Secret projects, there we go. Of course, the Eye of Stormlight coin holder with all of the Kickstarter coins. So pretty. We've got a little Tensoon hiding in the back there. And then I needed Mervyn, because I love Mervyn. And Nightblood. Here we have the rest of the Cosmere. These are on the shelf in my original Decroy with Trafo with Tank and Miswa order. I didn't want to just intermingle Stormlight and Mistborn Era 2 on the shelf. That would look weird, so I didn't. Elantris, Emperor's Soul, the original releases of the White Sand graphic novel. This is the lowest number I have of anything on White Sand 2. Let me show it off. Number 3 of White Sand 2. Ha ha ha! That's pretty awesome! On the bottom shelf are the packages and containers for the Stormlight Minis. I have a friend who's really good at painting miniatures, and so I will probably have his help paint the miniatures. But I haven't gotten to that point yet. We'll see. Then we have this shelf, which is basically all of my non-Cosmere Sanderson. So, starting over here, we've got Hesho standing in front of the Skyward series. I noticed the way his hands were stitched, his paws, paws, it looked like he was supposed to be holding something, and so I got him a little samurai sword to hold. It's, it's a good time. He is directly in front of the Skyward series there, along with Boomslug, protecting them. Uh, we also have the Alcatraz series, which are delightful. 
if you haven't read them, definitely worth the read. The only series that Sanderson Discovery wrote rather than outlined. The Rhythmatist, which we will get a sequel to eventually. Another copy of Frugal Wizards. We've got Legion, Dark One. This is the Writers of the Future anthology, which includes the first look at the lesson with Yasna and Shallan in Carbranth. This one actually took me a long time to find. This is Armored, the Armored Anthology, which includes one of the most difficult short stories to find of Sanderson. This has the Heuristic Algorithm and Reasoning Response Engine, which is like a future military short story, which he wrote with Scar, with Ethan Scarstead, uh, because Scar was in the military. I also have a couple random UK editions of Calamity and Bands of Mourning my burner version of Hero of Ages, and then some other random, like, sample stuff. Half Way of Kings and then half Mistborn. It switches upside down in the middle. It's like the first five chapters of each. Uh, we've got a sample of the Skyward books, another sample of Reckoners, and then we've got the Kaladin album on CD, and then the Kaladin art book that came with it, which is gorgeous. Down on the lower shelf, we have the entirety of Wheel of Time, which I have assembled from thrift stores, so that's why it's all weird. Nice fancy leather bound of Eye of the World. Most of them, one through five in paperback, this random giant Lord of Chaos. I don't have Wheel of Time number seven, eight, nine, ten, and then Sanderson in bigs. Also, another couple burner copies of Way of Kings and Words of Radiance. Then down here, these are the books that I either want to read or would like to read again eventually. So I have not read Game of Thrones. I got this set from Costco because it was cheap and I'm gonna read it eventually. I grew up reading David Eddings, the Belgariad and the Malorian over here. Sword of Shannara, which I grew up reading. Assassin's Apprentice, which I adore. Continuing with the Fools trilogy from Robin Hobb. So good. His Dark Materials trilogy, which I have not read, but I have them ready to read. There is a space here, which is where The Name of the Wind fits. I have started reading Name of the Wind, but I, I have feelings about it. Mostly the feelings are it's incredible, but I have, I have feelings about Name of the Wind. I'll probably make a video about Name of the Wind eventually. We'll get there. Stephen King, I've got The Gunslinger, and I just barely read I Am Not a Serial Killer by Dan Wells and I had a good time. On the very bottom shelf, I have room for more books, mostly a water bottle. Uh, the Firefly book, book on Hamilton. This, The Boy in the Sleigh. This is a book that my brother just barely wrote. It is about Peter Pan, and I will be recording an audiobook of it in the near future. So check out The Boy in the Sleigh. It's on Amazon. Uh, also, a ceramic head that my mom made in, like, high school ceramics. And some granola bars, because everybody needs granola bars. <sighs> and then the final bookshelf in my office is this, right next to the TARDIS. I didn't want to paint the TARDIS, because that would be just a lot of work. So we had a TARDIS blanket at home, and I just tacked up a TARDIS blanket. And it looks great, I think. But anyway, on top is a statue of the king in yellow. Also, I got a, a Spider-Man suit for Christmas, so I've got a Spider-Man suit in here as well. The top shelf is mostly textbooks and other cool, good, like, self-help type books. I was a communications major in college, and so I, I love communication and how we, like, develop meaning and create our identities through interacting with others. It's really cool. Good textbooks that just are solid information. Also, a couple copies of, of course, How to Win Friends and Influence People, because who doesn't want to do that? Good Morning, Good Night by Lynn manuel Miranda. Uh, we've got Zombies Run, which is an excellent exercise app that they made and like, in-world book to go with, which is really fun. Second shelf down is the Shakespeare shelf. Shakespeare is like my second passion behind Sanderson. I'm heavily involved with a local Shakespeare company. I've been performing with them for uh, like 12 years at this point. Shakespeare and acting also are things that I really enjoy. We've got accent books, we've got acting books, we've got Shakespeare books. The Shakespeare company that I am involved with is mentioned by name in this textbook, The Secrets of Acting Shakespeare. We Shakespeare like Shakespeare Shakespeare, which is why we're so cool. Down here we have other fiction that I enjoy. We've got Lovecraft, Sherlock Holmes, Another older version of Sherlock Holmes, King Arthur, Dracula, and Frankenstein. Frankenstein, if you haven't read Frankenstein, Franken I love Frankenstein. A fancy copy of The Lord of the Rings that I got for free because it was missing the dust jacket. Some more Tolkien stuff. And then we've got the screw tape letters because I thought it would be funny to put C.S. Lewis right next to Tolkien. 
because <laughs> they're friends. Poe, P.G. Wodehouse, Princess Bride, Piglet. Then the last couple books of the Alchemist series by Michael Scott. The final not actually written by Douglas Adams book of Hitchhiker's Guide, that increasingly ill-named trilogy. And then the Ocarina of Time manga, which is why there's a little link right there. The link from the Ocarina of Time, back when it was like first released, they made these little guys. Next shelf down, comic books. Superman Red Sun, which is one of my favorite comic books I've ever read. Bunch of other Doctor Who comic books, because I like Doctor Who. Leaves on the Wind, a, a Firefly comic book. Some empty notebooks. <laughs> and then other kind of non-fiction, except for Doctor Who and Star Wars. Catch me if you can, technically. And Catcher in the Rye. But other non-fiction that I will eventually read. I really want to read Gun, Germs, and Steel. I've heard excellent things about it. If any of you have read any of these non-fiction stuff, Stuff, let me know which one I should start with. I will read and find out. Worst case scenario survival handbook. This is Life in a Putty Knife Factory. I found this at a thrift store when I was in high school and went, huh, that sounds weird. I'll buy it for 25 cents. And it's hilarious by H. Allen Smith. Has anyone else read Life in a Putty Knife Factory? I want to know. I want to meet you because it was exactly my type of humor in high school. It was wild. And then on the very bottom shelf, games. All of the Crafty Games Mistborn RPG, I made a video talking about Crafty Games and then they emailed me and said, hey, do you have all of those? And I said, no. And they said, do you want them? And I said, yes. So they very kindly sent me copies of all of the Mistborn RPG books, which is great. I also have a bunch of dice. I have all of the Mistborn dice, including the Allomancy set. We've got the Era 2 set. We've got the Ferrochemy set, which I got in a tin because they're different symbols. The Ferrukemi dice set with the actual, like, the packaging. And then the actual Mistborn metal dice, which are so cool. These are gorgeous. I love them. This also came with a foldable dice tower with the metal symbols on the side. Basically all of the other Sanderson games that we've gotten to this point. I'm sure I will add to this shelf this year. Call to Adventure Stormlight Archive, also the Mistborn House Warboard game, and the Reckoners, the base game, and the Steel Slayer expansion, also the Siege of Luthadel expansion for the Mistborn House Warboard game, and then a bunch of cards, because who ever has enough poker decks. The Go Fish from the Cytoverse box. Of course, the Mistborn cards from King's Wild. The Wax and Wayne cards from the Era 2 Leatherbound. The Stormlight Archive cards from the Way of Kings Leatherbound. And then these, which I was given as a Secret Seiza gift. A custom deck of cards, of Mistborn cards. I talked about them in my Secret Seiza video. Also got some swords in my coat rack, because what coat rack is complete without some swords? Also, here are all of the convention, like, lanyards and name tags and stuff that I've gotten for being at all the things. Starsight, back when Fanax was called Salt Lake Comic Con. All of the Dragon Steels. Yeah, yeah. The Bridge 4 movie poster. And in the corner here, we have two of my Myth Cloaks. This is the bin of all of the merchandise that I've created, all of the things that I've been selling at various conventions. There is an order form in the description of this video if you would like any merchandise, like a Raffo shirt or pin or any of my stickers. We got good stuff. Also, here are all of the metals that I use to make the Mistborn metal vials. I have just gotten all of the modern metals. So if you want a full set, of every Allomantic metal that is mentioned in Mistborn 1 and Mistborn Era 2. I've got cadmium and chromium and bendeloy and nicrosil, and nicrosil was really hard to find. But you can get a full set, you can get individual metals at that order form in the description. Then the final thing, this is a drawer full of all of the cool stuff that I have gotten that is flat, that I don't know how else to display. Bunch of pins are in here, all the patches, coasters, Stuff I've gotten at conventions, bunch of stickers, bookmarks, all the things. I've got a bunch of art in here, like I've got all of the system charts, system planetary maps, those things. Some other Secret Sazed gifts. I am wearing a Secret Sazed gift right now. Ask me about the Cosmere. Thank you for lovely Secret Sazed gifts. If you haven't participated in Secret Sazed, you should participate in Secret Sazed. It's super fun. And that is my office. This is where I will be recording all of my videos. This is where I will be recording all of the audio stuff that I do. And so I guess the last thing I want to say is just uh, thank you. Thank you for supporting me on this journey and getting me to a place where I can, like, 
have a dedicated space to record, which is cool. Thank you specifically to my patrons. Patreon is effectively paying the rent on this office every month, so thank you so much for supporting me in, in that way. Specifically thank you to Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, and Dalinar's butt. Where would we be without Dalinar's butt? I'm excited to be adding to my leather bounds very soon with the Words of Radiance campaign coming out next week. Next week I will also be making a video about the Words of Radiance Leatherbound campaign, seeing what what are the options, what everything is, the, all of what 631 is. What is 631, Brandon? It's probably going to be dealing with something about his 631st video, which should coincide with about the Leatherbound release. We'll find out next week. I'm really excited to see what is going to be in that campaign, so I can't wait to read and find out. Oh, if you're a patron, you can see the entire process of me building this. Because that is in a video released exclusively for my patrons on my Patreon. If you want to see how I built my TARDIS, you can watch it on my Patreon. Please join. I like it. Bye. I got this. I got this. I got this.